Let's go to another game. Actually, I want to split the next two. Let's talk about these two big upsets today. Um, Hack, we'll start with you. Which was the more impressive takedown? Appalachian State traveling into Kyle Field and taking down a top 10 team with no trickery or yeah. Marshall going into South Bend and beating a team that started the season out top five. Yeah, I think that's hard. Um, I got to go with Marshall just because I got a tie with, with Charles Huff, the head coach there. Uh, love him. Love the type of energy he brings and for him to bring Marshall back, which has some history. I mean, that, that program has some history. Um, but to bring them back to the forefront. And I think he's got that, that train moving in the right direction. And I think with the way Notre Dame played and we, we talked about it kind of with Texas moral victories, right. And, and no one believes in them. And I think that this is a good Testament for Texas moving forward. Right. I think Notre Dame maybe could have gotten a little bit um, caught up in that. They go up to Ohio state, slug it out with them for four quarters you know hey, good we about only, it. yeah we only dropped two spots like it's cool we got marshall coming in and you know here we go and they get beat um and i think that's the that's the tell of two teams especially when you run into that situation do you take it as a moral victory or do you take it as as something where you say okay we can play but now we got to prove it there's there's I, to me there's a little bit of a different mindset and it starts in your from your head coach and trickles down to your locker room how you handle mm -hmm. things on a day-to-day -day basis so I'm going to give my tip of the cap to Marshall, but also very impressed with App State. I mean, I mean, they've done it year in, year out. They almost had they had North Carolina last week. That team's that team's a really good football team, and also a big testament, I think, to the transfer portal with their starting quarterback and Chase Bryce, kid who started at Clemson, went to Duke, has now found a home at App State. Like that's that's a success story of the transfer portal, and I think that that shouldn't be overlooked. Trevor Knight, your Aggies. I didn't want to start with you. I want to let you get a chance to. Just to kind of feel your way in on this, the Aggies, eight total first downs, mm. eight total first downs. Now, they did point this out on the on the broadcast. Appalachian State man to man is much older. They have a lot of four five, six year players, <laughs> but I don't know how that really weighs in. <laughs> That's um, reaching. It is reaching. I'm just trying to throw a little something in there for him. But it's like the Yankees salary cap at like. <laughs> Like you know, over a billion, and then two point five the billion. Padres over there, <laughs> savvy vets, just hey. filled with a bunch of savvy vets. The uh, <laughs> Trevor eight first downs, man to man, seventeen fourteen, and they were toe to toe all afternoon. They're your Aggies. You clearly had you know some insider perspective on this as you were watching it. I'll say this about about both the games. I'll start there. Um, absolutely unexplicable. Can't can't happen. Absolutely cannot happen at Notre Dame or Texas A and M. That being said, I think the A and M loss was worse because of the hype surrounding Jimbo Fisher, and he has had a runway to get things to where he should have them. Right. I mean, it's no longer like a Notre Dame's first year head coach. Give him some time to, I, you know, kind of develop his identity, those types of things. And Trevor, the other thing is, is, I mean, they had a they had a cupcake walk last week, too. In, in a and M, you know what I mean. They don't even yeah. have the excuse they, of like a moral they're not beat up, down, they're, they're, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? No doubt. There's no excuse whatsoever. Jimbo Fisher and that staff, they've had years to get ready to. For, for this to be the quote unquote year and for analysts preseason to say, hey, they got a shot not only to run the conference, but to go to the national title and then to come out and have a loss like this. I mean, it just cannot happen. I'll tell you what was most disappointing in the game out of the Aggies. Um, abysmal, abysmal on offense. But even more so than that, they got outplayed in every phase of football, but it went beyond that. They got out hearted. Uh, they got out hustled. Um, they 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 showed up and felt like they could just walk through this Appalachian State team, who's a great team. We saw them get battle tested last week. Now they come in here and and I just it, it was a horrible aroma by every single player on the team. There was no fight. 
And Appalachian State looked like the team that was supposed to be there as opposed to the other way around. It was it can't happen, George. It just absolutely can't happen for either of these schools. But I thought the AM loss was worse. Bryce Petty, which uh, just what was your perspective on those two kind of upset knockouts? I get the sting that uh, Trevor feels from his Aggies. Do you think that sting is applicable over to Notre Dame, you know, given first year head coach? Or is it equal? And and uh, how bad was it for these two programs? Yeah, look, I don't, I don't really think there's any way to sugarcoat either of them. I, th- I think it's it's you know you you schedule these games as as what they are they're tune up games. And so any time that you falter in a tune up game is it's it's not good for the program, regardless of your a tenure like you know Jimbo or a first year coach like Marcus Freeman. I think the one that hurts is is probably Marcus Freeman. Um, Jimbo's Jimbo making 110 million bucks a year. Uh, not not a year, but in the contract, you know, um, he's going to be making that. It's, well, it's not after you know, <laughs> right. So, but the idea of Marcus, man, it's 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 hard because, and they even had a deal that you know that where, where else would be your best first win outside of you know without being at Notre Dame Stadium, you know, you, that kind of stuff is is hard, you know, and I, and I think they're already looking forward to to next year. But the the, the hard one for me is that Marcus being a uh, you know Coach Freeman being a defensive guy. Man, when you give up 220 plus yards on the ground to Marshall, that one's tough. You know, that and, and he said all the right things in the presser. It's on me, it's on me, it's on me. But you know, at some point, it, you know, that uh that that program has a whole lot of history to it. That was the other thing that they they've won 42, I believe, unranked uh, uh you know, games, games. and so uh yeah. you know on unranked teams, yeah, exactly. So so you know, when the, there's just a lot of history with that program, and so um, you know, the way, again, that, that Coach Kelly left for LSU, he steps in. He's a player's guy. Man, it's great to be a player's guy if you're winning. You know, it's, it's like a plus. But you know, if you're a player's guy and you're losing, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so at some point, you got you got to win over there in South Bend. And then for Jimbo, I mean, it's, you know, it, I think everybody kind of thought that, you know, six was way, way too high for, for A&M. Um, and, and Trevor, you know, spoke, spoke to it. But th- this was their season. You know, there's a lot of hype that in College Station – um, again, they, they had the Yankees, uh, you know, salary cap dudes paying, paying everybody out the butt. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough deal for both of them. Hey, can, let me ask you this, George. I think it's a good question for you. I know it's one loss, but like I said, it's a loss that can't happen for either school. But does this put either head coach on the, the hot seat to any capacity? I mean, let's talk about A&M specifically, right? Jimbo Fisher, they've given him everything in the world. They've opened up their checkbooks, but he's going to be around. The buyout would be way it's too astronomical. high. Astronomical, right? It makes it noisier for Jimbo Fisher. A&M, and we have a crack research team at Trevor and Dagan. If I'm not mistaken, A&M has the hardest schedule in college football this year. Miami comes to town next week. Then they play four of the top five teams in Jurassic Park. Like, it was only supposed to, it's only going to go up from these giant killers. For a, a quick aside here, Mark Rick told me years ago when he was at Georgia, you do not want to schedule winning programs. If in, in your preseason, in your offseason, don't go find warlords from like Boise or um, App State. Like they're accustomed to winning. They see themselves as winners. North Dakota, like leave those guys alone. Go find the fat, downtrodden, power five programs that continually lose. If you need somebody to go play, go grab a power five program and put them in there. Don't go get the undefeated middleweight and throw them in there. That's, it's just It just doesn't go well. Beat them and you're supposed to. If you don't have your fastball that night, it's going to get bad. It's going to get ugly like it was tonight. What's going on, guys? Rob Doster here, the founder of the Field of 68 and the Field of 12 Media Networks. I wanted to take a quick minute to let you guys know about an exciting new project that we have been working on for the last three months. The Almanac, an all-encompassing preview of the 2022-23 college basketball season. We spoke with 
every single Division One head coach to give you a robust and accurate preview for all 363 Division One college basketball teams. We have predictions for conference finishes for all 32 leagues. We have features on the best freshmen, the best big men, the breakout stars, the coaches on the hot seat, so much more. It is 600,000 words of sheer happiness for the college basketball fan in your life the almanac is going to be available for digital purchase on september 26th for just 19 dollars 99 but you can pre-order it today using the promo code hoops and save 20 percent just hit the link in the description below